so much for joining us at Hello Neighbor today. Can you tell us a little bit about who you are and your job? Yeah, my name is Jonathan Oxier. I write strange stories for strange kids. Uh, I live here in Edgewood, which is where I write all of my books, and I am a regular patron at C.C. Miller. So I'm very excited to be here. We're so excited to have you as a patron. It's so nice having neighbors come to the library. So why did you decide to become an author? Um, I decided to become an author because I wasn't a very good artist. I always wanted to tell stories and my mother is a brilliant painter and I thought I was going to follow in her footsteps and I drew comics and I drew picture books and I drew illustrations my whole life and I thought that's what I was going to do. But I hit a point where I realized that I wasn't actually that great at drawing and I had all these stories in my head but I wasn't good enough to put them down on paper and so I had to figure out some other way to get those stories out. And even though I had not been a good student um, in terms of reading and English classes in school, I decided that that was probably gonna be the best way for me to get these stories out because once you can write, you can write anything. So I knew that if I could figure out how to write, then I wouldn't have to uh, change or hem in or kind of shrink my stories down to the level of my uh, mediocre skill. And so I really learned to write out of necessity. A lot of people grow up writing when they're little kids, but that was not who I was. I had to kind of pick it up and learn after I was a little bit older. That sounds like you had a, a long journey to become an author. So when did you know you wanted it, to do it as a job? Well, I always wanted to tell stories as a, as a job, and so that part of it never changed. I was always coming up with characters and stories and uh, ideas, and I was always asking what if, which is kind of the most powerful question any uh, storyteller can ask. Um, and I had those ideas my whole life, and I always knew I wanted to find a way to tell stories. So in some ways, I never wavered in what I wanted to do, but in other ways, it took me uh, quite a while to figure out how I could tell stories. Interesting. So there are a lot of different ways to approach being an author. What do you think is the hardest part of your job? All jobs are hard. That's why they pay you to do them. <laughs> um, there are things I love about being an author, but one of the hardest things, honestly, is actually writing. I find it very difficult to write things, especially the first draft. I quite enjoy editing when I go back and I, and I kind of tighten things and make it cleaner and better. That's really enjoyable to me. But when I start with a blank page and just have nothing to go on, that I find very, very difficult. And uh, I'm, you know, my fifth book is coming out this fall and it's never gotten easier. Every time I sit down to a blank page, it's hard all over again. Would you also say that that's the most important part or is there another part of writing you feel is more important? Oh, there are so many important parts of writing. I think that's actually why writing is such a difficult job is because it requires several different skill sets. I think the most important part of writing and what I would define as someone who's a naturally good writer, and this is true of kind of any innate gift, we often think that when people have uh, are born with a skill, what we mean is that they're really good without trying. But that's not what I think about it. I think when we say someone is born with a skill, what we're actually saying is they're born with an unusually large amount of patience for a certain type of activity. So I happen to be unusually patient with myself as I write and with my writing as it comes together and at, with my stories as I discover them. And that patience is the gift that I think any person needs. Like I said, I, I don't think I was naturally a very good writer, but I am very, very patient and I'm willing to go back to it again and again until I find my way through a story. I see what you're saying. I think there's also that fascination and interest in uh, in focusing all your time on something too. That can be fun, though I do like distractions from time to time. What's your favorite part about writing? My favorite part about writing is having written. I love when I've finally finished something and I can look back on it and I can see this thing that started with a blank page and is now full of characters and stories and jokes and, and silly parts. Um, I really like the satisfaction of having finished the job. And then the other thing I really love doing is going out to, I do a lot of school and library visits all over the country and I love hanging out with kids. Um, I've worked with kids almost for every job I've ever had. And so that's a really wonderful part of the job when I can actually kind of hang out in the real world with readers and talk about books and make jokes and just have a good time. Yeah, you get to connect with uh, different people over a shared interest. Yeah. 
So you said you were going out and doing uh, different readings and everything and interactions. What does your workspace look like? My workspace is not terribly fancy, especially at the moment. Uh, generally, my wife, who also works in books, she and I rent office space in East Liberty and we go out there together and we hang out and really enjoy our time together. But now we're in a situation where those office spaces are closed and our kids are home with us because there's no school and no day camps or anything like that. And so I am working in my attic. Now, I actually love my attic. It's it's a little small and I'm quite tall so it feels like I'm boarding an airplane when I get on because the roof is low. But other than that, it's a really nice space to just be with my own thoughts. It gets a little warm in the summer, um, but that's a small price to pay to have a space that's all mine. It's nice to have some place where you can just focus on what you need to focus on. Absolutely. How do you think best? I think best while going for walks, which again is very hard in the hot summer uh, because that's not a super fun time to walk. Um, I used to actually live in uh, Southern California, which was super hot and dry. And one of the actual reasons we moved away was because it was too hot for me to go for walks. Um, but generally speaking, um, what I use in my daily life is pretty simple. Um, I have a laptop and I write my manuscripts on that. I also carry everywhere I go, I carry a journal like this. Um, I've got about maybe 40 of these lined up on a shelf uh, in my library and um, every single one of them is just full of pictures and little ideas and doodles. I can show you, I always use the same kind of, it's a pretty simple like uh, just rolling ball pen, uh, a pilot pen and it slides nicely into the little spine. I like the spine because I can flip the cover all the way back. And the stuff I'm writing is not special. These aren't genius ideas. Sometimes I'm just writing about my day. Often I'm trying to write little things that I've read. Every time I read a book, I copy down passages that I liked from it. And just little doodles and drawings like this. And I'm always, everything I've ever written kind of starts um, with doodles and drawings in my journal. And then eventually it, be it becomes a story. Um, so those are really the only tools I have. And I love that about being a writer. For a lot of jobs, you need a lot of really expensive equipment. And while there are some requirements for writing, including the time and the space and the freedom to write, uh, mostly all you need is uh, a computer or even less just a paper and pen and then you need the time and the willingness to read a lot. So I would say the other tool in my writing toolbox uh, is that we have uh, tons and tons of books in our home and we are always reading every single day and when we run out of books in our home, which does happen, then we go down to the local library and pick up more books and that's a huge part of being a writer that I find people didn't really tell me about uh, when I was thinking about being a storyteller that the most important part is first and foremost being a reader. What is something that we might not know about your job? Things you might not know about my job. Well, one of the things that surprised me, and it's funny, I just didn't think about it, but I've always loved, I write kids' books because I read kids' books. Even when I was no longer a kid myself, I loved reading stories about kid characters going on adventures. It just continued to interest me into adulthood. One of the things that I didn't think about when I published my own books was that uh, I would get to go to conferences and library events full of other authors and I would get a chance to hang out with and meet my favorite authors from when I was a kid. And that is a huge, huge thrill. I'm sure it's a little awkward when I freak out in front of these people, but they made a huge impact in my life. And it's such an honor uh, to get to hang out with them and talk about writing and just talk about their lives. And that has been one of my favorite parts of this job is because I'm constantly starstruck by all the people that I get to meet and hang out with and talk with. And that's a, a deep, deep joy is to be connected to that larger community of other writers. It does. It sounds like a great community to be part of. They're pretty good folk, most of them. Do you have any advice for kids who want to become authors? A little bit of writing advice that I always give to people, whether they're kids or adults, or frankly, it's advice I try to repeat to myself every single morning, which is that the most important words you will ever write in your life are the end. When you're writing a story, it doesn't count unless you've finished the story. Just like when you're running a race, it doesn't count until you cross that finish line. It doesn't have to be pretty, but you have to get across that line. And as a writer, certainly I was this kind of person. I had a million cool ideas, but I would kind of start them and then give up because they got a little hard or they just it stopped being as fun or I found a new, more interesting idea. And so I had I would end up with stacks and stacks of stories that had been started, but none of them were done. And I really believe you can't say you've written a story until you've written a story all the way through. 
And so pushing and pushing and pushing to get past that finish line, to write the end, that is the most important thing in the world. And once you've done that, you will be filled with so much pride and excitement that it's gonna push you further to go back and revise it. It's gonna encourage you to the next step. So whatever you do, when you've got a story that you love, do not abandon it. You owe it to the story to get all the way to the end. It does not have to be pretty. No one gets it right on the first try, but you can never write a story unless you've actually written the story. That sounds like a lot of things in life. You can't do it unless you do it. Well, it sounds like you read a lot of books to be inspired and everything. What kind of, what books did you really enjoy when you were a kid? Or kids books that you enjoy now as an adult? So when I was a kid, there were a couple authors that I was a, a huge, huge fan of. Um, one of them was Roald Dahl. Um, I was a big, big fan of his books, and I still enjoy quite a few of them now. I really loved Matilda, so much so that I actually named one of my daughters Matilda uh, after that book. Another writer that I was a, a really big fan of uh, was a fantasy writer named Lloyd Alexander. So he wrote a terrific fantasy series called uh, The Chronicles of Predane. Uh, about an assistant pig keeper named Taryn, who ends up basically going on this huge quest uh, to save his entire land. And they're great books because they have all the fun and excitement of something like Lord of the Rings, uh, but they are much shorter, they're much funnier, the characters are frankly more crisply drawn. Um, I was really excited because this spring I was able to read the Chronicles of Prydain to my own daughters, um, and we had a really good time going through that whole series, which I had not read since I was a kid. And it was a really, really fun, uh, thing to revisit and go through again. That's a great series. I still remember reading The Black Cauldron and sitting, we were in a restaurant and eating like my pasta and reading The Black Cauldron and my family being like, Allison, participate in family conversation. Are you being too sucked in? Because there's yeah. like an element of danger to those books too. The books are actually kind of shockingly dark. I, I had thought of them as, as, as a little more, uh, I mean, they are kid friendly. They're fun. I read them to my uh, then uh, five and seven year old and they were fine but the books are quite gruesome which is something I also really enjoy in a kid's book so they really fit the bill for me all right and then so on hello neighbor we well so with kids programs we usually make ice cream during the summer obviously we can't do that this year but I am taking a poll of everyone what do you prefer vanilla or chocolate ice cream Oh man, I am a huge ice cream fan. Uh, that's probably my number one favorite food and I can put away more ice cream than any other person I've ever met. That being said, I do not like chocolate ice cream. I find it's a little too rich. Maybe it, it's so rich that it slows me down and that's not what I like. Whereas vanilla ice cream is like a, is like a blank palette that you can just apply other flavors on top. So I'm a, I would go with vanilla every day of the week. That makes sense. Sounds good. Thank you so much for joining us on Hello Neighbor. I really appreciate your time. Absolutely. Have a wonderful day. I hope to see you around the neighborhood.